Hi everyone, welcome to you with the Medical FM tonight. And um, I want to just share something with you, a change that I've noticed over the years. People used to come to me uh, because of their pain, and sometimes it's pain in relationships, pain in their body, or sometimes it's to do with people uh, who want to make more money, they want money in the bank. And today I'm also getting a lot of questions from people who specifically come to me because they want to um, be more spiritual, they want to have a spiritual life. And so tonight with it being Christmas, I thought it might be a really good idea to focus on uh, how you can co connect or um, evolve your spiritual life a little bit. And we're just going to use a series of questions so you get to experience yourself as a spirit. Um, so most people now, they, they have some money in the bank and they have relative security and they um, are healthy enough and they know that if they were to make more money or even had better health, their lives wouldn't change that much and they want to change something, they want to feel fundamental shift and they know that it's to do with their spiritual life. So I'm not talking about religion here, I'm talking about spirit spirit in the context of complete freedom of religious constraints and uh, thankfully we're living in a time now where that's very easy to do and so um, first of all a good idea is to start with the same question that that you've probably already asked yourself a million times who am i who am i who am i um, without my job who am I stripped of my body? Who am I without my personality? Who am I without my genetic or DNA expression? Who am I? And, uh, and where am I going to? That's of course the next question. What, what happens at the end of my life as I know it? So these are good questions to, to ask yourself. Because when you ask yourself those questions, you're going to get answers. Um, and then another uh, really good thing to know is for you to have a relationship with the universe because Einstein he knew that the universe um, was a force of benevolence that means um, the universe looks after you you are the universe by the way but for some people that's too hard to understand so just think of the universe as a huge semi trailer truck who rocks up in your driveway every morning to bring you gifts and to bring you what you need and it, like uh, an unlimited bank of money if you want to think of it in those terms so the universe uh, is here to look after us and the universe is actually um, um, uh, put, held together in harmony with the force of unconditional love now only 10% of the world population believes that so only 10% of the world population has an active loving relationship with the universe which flows back to, to themselves and those people have successful, happy, meaningful lives because they're carried by the universe. I guess in a way, as far as we know, Einstein experienced that himself. There is 10% of the world population believes the universe is their enemy and how to get them at every turn and, and so that's literally what happens. They experience a lot of misfortune and probably end up bitter and um, with a lot of difficulty and problems. And then 80% of, of people who walk the world today um, don't know what to believe. So 80% believe the universe actually doesn't care about them. It's completely indifferent. They believe the universe doesn't worry if they wake up in the morning or if they die or if they hurt their foot or that the universe is, is not interested. And so they're living in a sense of limbo and they're also not getting the full benefit of living on this planet. However, which, wherever you come from, right, nothing is right or wrong. It's more a question of um, um, do you want a great life? Do you want to feel fulfilled? Do you want to have meaning? And do you 
want to connect with the spirit. Some people don't want all of that. And that's part of their journey in, in the body in this lifetime. And that's okay. So this is really purely for yourself if that's what you want. So let's go back to that question. Um, who am I? So am I my body? Well, um, if you've had a near-death experience, I had a near-death experience in 2006 when I got hit by a truck and I literally left my body. So I know for myself from that experience that now I'm not my body. When I, I, and I can simply step out of this body and one day I will step out of this body again. Like, you know, I'm attached to my body. Um, and it's of course easy to think that this is me because I'm inside the capsule like a little alien suit all the time. But when I got hit by the truck, I instantly left my body. I didn't even travel through a tunnel of light or anything. And um, I, I, I stepped out of my nervous system. And so I didn't feel any emotions or, or probably didn't even have thoughts either. Uh, it's hard to describe, but I had this incredible sense of uh, wellness and that everything in the whole universe is in perfect order, nothing is out of order ever, it never is and it never will be. And um, just that complete feeling that I'm being carried and nurtured by something that's far, far greater than me. And then I also had the interesting experience um, that I thought of the children, you know, I had one last random thought and um, or they came into my awareness and I was immediately back in my body. It all happened so fast. I didn't really make any choices. I probably did, but it happened so fast that I, I wasn't aware of it. So that also taught me that um, being connected to love and, and loving yourself and invest in love and put everything into it and be open to love, that's what's... Uh, that's what is going to pull us. We're going to be pulled towards that after we die. So love has a really powerful energy that will um, even sway us after we leave our body. So in, in a sense, you could say living a spiritual life is knowing who you are. You're not your body. You're not your thoughts and you're also not your emotions. And you can put money in your spiritual bank by, by um, being open to love, by growing in love, by being conscious that you are doing this journey and, and that it's important that you focus on love rather than fear or all the other dark sides that are there too. And by that I don't mean being positive because that's different. Being positive is not being true to yourself. So still be true to yourself, but just treat yourself in a loving way. Um, just like how you love a little newborn baby. So let me use that as an example. When a little baby is born um, or you visit somebody and they have a little newborn, we fall completely in love with that little child. And we, see, we think that little baby is absolutely uh, amazing and magnificent and and you feel your heart just fill up with love but actually uh, what we're recognizing is our own innocence our own spirit side and that's um, what we're falling in love with so i'm jumping ahead here a little bit so let's do a little exercise so if you're not your body and then i'm going to say are you your thoughts you know, we all think a lot of stuff all day long, 60,000 thoughts, most of them are kind of repetitive. Are you your thoughts? And the answer, of course, is no, you're not your thoughts. Like some people uh, and some spiritual teachers believe that thoughts are kind of influences that pass by. <clears throat> they travel through us, they travel through our brain or our nervous system. And we literally latch on to them and then we believe I created a thought <clears throat> Or we even believe I am that thought. But nothing could be further from the truth. And by the way, <clears throat> one way to prove that to yourself is at night you go to sleep 
and you're not really thinking, not definitely not in a rational way, and you're still alive, so you're not your thoughts, okay? So you can let that one go as well. And so you're not your feelings either. So I'm very much a feeling person. I feel a lot, I pick up a lot through my feelings. And I'm always sort of caught up in my feelings if I'm not careful, but at the same time, I know I'm not my feelings. And so, um, so who are you then? If you're not your body and you're not your thoughts and you're not your feelings and you're not your emotions, that means you are a spirit. And of course you knew that all along. So you were actually a spirit having a physical, emotional uh, and mental experience. And the whole time you, while you're living that life and doing all that and going through your daily emotions, the whole time you're also actually looking to reconnect with your spirit and that's a beautiful thing. That feeling will never go away. That feeling of like, who am I really behind um, all my personas, behind my busyness, behind my doingness? Who am I? And we, we're drawn to that spirit because we know that when we connect with it and, and it gets easier and easier to, to connect with it, you have a beautiful, blissful life. So another way I often explain it is that your spirit is like this. So this is your immortal self that's always been around. It's been around since before the universe was created, you could say. And this is your personality or your emotional, uh, physical and thinking side. So all day long we do this. It's very exhausting and painful at different times and exhilarating. And we have a good life when we remember we are really more this than this. And we have a good life if the two meet regularly during the day. And how do you do that? Well, by tuning into your innermost self. Give it a chance to talk to you. Give it a chance to listen, uh, listen to it. And um, um, yeah, meditate. Um, we all meditate, by the way, all day long, because when you open your car and so on, you go off into a bit of a trance. So that's often a good time to tune into your real self, who you really are. So right now, I actually want to invite you to do a little exercise that might help you feel your innermost self and see if you can meet it. And then once you connect with your innermost self, then I'm going to encourage you to, to allow that self to teach you to have a relationship with the universe that's rewarding, that you benefit from, that you feel a level of trust and, and, and love that the universe carries you and brings you gifts, just like Santa Claus. Just pretend the universe is Santa Claus, but a friendly, benevolent version that's always on your side. It's not here to punish you, it's here to bring out to the best in you to make your spirit feel alive. So let's just uh, close, close your eyes for a minute. I'm just going to invite you to close your eyes. Um, okay, I just realized I didn't have my thing is clipped on, so you probably didn't hear what I was saying. But anyway, um, close your eyes and just take a breath into your body. And just become aware that you're not your body. And you're also not your thoughts. The thoughts will come in and just let them go backwards and forwards. And then inside your heart, you might have feelings and you might feel a little bit of stress from today or pressure about getting ready for Christmas. And just realize you're also not your feelings. And now I want you to go further back into your body. So just place your attention towards the back. The back of your head, the back of your heart, your spine, the back of your bottom where it's sitting on the chair. Just go as far back as you can go. And now you might suddenly feel surprised how quiet it is in there. Because your innermost self is always quiet. It doesn't need anything, it's not grasping, it's not judging, 
it's not wanting anything it's just simply there like an awareness Some people call it spaciousness, so just go further back, keep going back into your body as far back as you can go. Now suddenly it starts to become very quiet and roomy and spacious in there. Perhaps you just feel the weight of your bottom on the chair or the feet on the floor. That might be the only thing you feel. And in a sense, nothing else is real. Nothing else is permanent. Except the real you. So just tune into the real you for a minute. And the, the good thing is while you do that, also remember that the real you is like an, an island of peace, you could say, uh, that's never been touched by anyone else and it's never been injured, it's never been traumatized, it's just pure awareness. Um, and so from that level, when you reach that level of consciousness and awareness, then it's also easy for you to, to feel at peace in yourself at a really deep level. Because re remember, this part has never been injured. It's never been touched. It doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't feel judged. It just simply is. And it's your immortal self that's always been around probably through many lifetimes already. And it will always be you and you'll know that one day when you step out of your body. And when that happens, it's like you will feel, it will feel so familiar to you. It will feel like coming home. And of course, the good news is that, um, like I said, when you step out of your body, you are still directed by love. So from my experience, you will be with your children. Um, and so that also means that, and that's good to know at Christmas time now, for those of you who've lost loved ones this year or last year, those people are still around you. They now, they've become your spiritual family. So I'm also going to invite you that when you tune into your real self that knows all this anyway, that, um, that you allow some time for your spiritual family to to talk to you. So just simply ask for a sign sometimes or ask for a cue. And um, uh, from my experience, the easiest way and sometimes the most convincing way, but the easiest way for our loved ones who've passed over to reach out to us is through a fragrance. So if your mom always had a certain um, moisturizer that was peculiar, you know, when you were a child, sometimes you just walk into that smell and then you know um, your mom is here or your dad's aftershave or something like that. Um, and then um, don't question it, just be, remain open and curious. Because the reason uh, we suffer when our loved ones die is because we ignore them, they don't ignore us, we tend to ignore them. And we are so full of grief or guilt or regrets or whatever that they can't reach out to us. But that's actually not how our loved ones want us to be. They want us to know that they are very happy, that they're in a beautiful place and that they are always with us till it's time for us to step out of our human experience. So I'm hoping that you've enjoyed this little question about how can I be more spiritual and remember the spiritual realm that's where all the miracles happen first and they flow into our physical body and they also flow into our relationships and into our finances as well so it's the most important part of your life that you absolutely need to cultivate and just keep opening up and asking questions and know that you are very, very much loved and that your life is 
important and you're here for a reason. So I hope that you really enjoy Christmas. Give yourself a chance to relax and explore some new things about yourself. Um, be open to good things and blessings that flow your way. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next Tuesday night. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Bye-bye.